Welcome back to Sports Video, our online course. And in this video, we're going over the fundamentals of live streaming. I want to make sure we cover everything so that you can go live. So some of the fundamentals of live streaming that we're going to go over today is literally like, where do we get the streaming keys from YouTube, from Facebook? How do we stream to those locations? And some of the bit rates and things to do that. Now, we we looked at level one being streaming from a smartphone or a tablet. Oftentimes, these apps kind of handle a lot of that stuff for you. So when we get into level two and level three, you know, we have a couple extra hoops to jump through. Uh, whether we can, are we going to stream to YouTube and Facebook at the same time? And, and how does that work? I want to cover all of that with you. Now, when it comes to live streaming, there's like three kind of main areas here of streaming. One is computer-based. Okay, so that means you're using a software like OBS, which I have here. And uh, we were looking at OBS recently. I'm going to use this as an example today to show you how to get a stream up to YouTube and Facebook. You've got hardware-based video switchers, right? We looked at the YOLO box, the Magewell Director Mini, but there's like video switchers that can stream with an encoder built in. And then you've got cloud-based video switching as well. Um, so all of these you know, different systems I want to kind of brace you on, explain to you what they do, and we'll kind of go over them. Now, the cool thing about computer-based streaming is that, you know, OBS is free, right? You can get started with any Mac or PC computer, start to bring in cameras, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. So you can just jump in with a computer. Now, eventually, if you have a kind of like low-end computer, you probably can't do a lot with it. You know, video is not necessarily easy. Um, but if you get a higher-end computer, you could do a lot with it. It's super flexible. Um, a lot of people prefer computer-based streaming systems because they can go to their local micro center or Best Buy and buy a custom gaming computer and you can do so much with it. You really can. Uh, you know, and when you're not using it for live streaming and production, you can use it for your sports instant replay. You can use it for your video editing. It's very, very flexible, more flexible than a hardware-based video switcher. The thing about hardware-based video switches is they just work. They do one job and you can really dedicate that to one thing. And you can even have a hardware-based video switcher and connect it to a computer, right? And bring your Blackmagic ATEM Mini or video switcher into your computer via USB and just use OBS as the ability to, you know, kind of record and stream that input that you're bringing into OBS, which is another option. So there's a lot of ways to get into this. And I'm going to try to talk to you about some of the pros and the cons of different approaches. But before we get into the cloud, which is going to be a whole chapter, and I even have a whole book on remote production, which is really powerful for full athletics departments that want to be able to jump into each court or each sport and you know control the cameras and stream them and switch them all remotely via the cloud technology. Let's just talk about the basics, right? Like understanding RTMP streaming. So RTMP streaming is the ability to stream to platforms like YouTube or Facebook. Essentially, YouTube or Facebook will give you a stream key and a URL. You can send that stream via OBS or you know, vMix or whatever software you're using to YouTube or Facebook. So the way that this generally will work here is that you will have, I'll zoom into this, you'll have some settings here that you can set up for your stream. So, in some cases, you can just log into your YouTube or Facebook account and they'll actually set up your stream for you. In other cases, you're going to have to enter in the server name and stream key yourself. So I wanted to make sure you kind of had an idea of where to get that. So let's go to YouTube. And what we'll do is in the top right, we'll hit create. We'll click the go live button and you'll see that there is a stream button there. And what will happen is, is that it'll actually create for us a RTMP um, server URL. So there's the server URL. And then here is the stream key right here. So that information is what we copy and paste into here. And then, boom, we can start streaming. So I wanted to make sure I showed you that at a minimum so that you know how to get that stream information. Boom. Okay. When I hit start streaming now, what's going to happen is, YouTube is going to receive this stream, okay, and start to, you know, basically now I can take this stream, I can share it with anyone in the world, 
and now they can view my stream, right? And from here, you have a chat room. This is YouTube, right? Facebook's a little different. And if you want to stream to multiple destinations, you can use a service like Restream.io so that you can stream one stream to YouTube or Facebook and then more to other places. Now, the other thing to think about is internet connectivity, right? So now I'm streaming to YouTube right now. And what you'll see is that my output of my streaming is set to 25 kilobits per second. That is the quality of my stream, right? And I have this kind of set in an advanced mode. If I stop my stream really quickly, I'll be able to edit this. You can't edit that while you're streaming. If I go ahead and edit my streaming information here and I go to the output um, and I could go to change this to maybe 5,000 and that's double the quality of 2,500. That's five megabits. That's a higher quality stream. Now, uh, essentially you need to look at what is your upload speed. So how much speed do you have available? So if I type in speed test into YouTube or sorry, into Google, you can see I've got 500 megabits of upload. It's a lot more than I had a year ago. It's always going up. I've got 200 megabits download. So five megabits is nothing. I've got 500 to deal with, right? So I could do 50,000 if I wanted to. I've got the space, but not everybody does. So think about your upload and download speeds because that'll affect the quality of your live stream. Okay, so we looked at level one, right? Streaming with your phone. This is the, the level where... You know, you might have Wi-Fi, you might just have a cellular connection, and you might have trouble getting a really good quality stream out, right? It might just be one camera view, but at least it's something better than nothing. Um, when we looked at this earlier, we showed a smartphone connected to a cell phone tower. Maybe you got a little Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi connects you to a router. And at that router level, you could do a speed test and say, hey, you know, how much speed do I have for streaming? With level two, we've started to add more cameras, right? Maybe a joystick. and Maybe we're using something like Speedify, which is an app we talked about previously, where we are combining cell phone connectivity and Wi-Fi connectivity to have a stronger stream to get out from a field. Then we've talked about, you know, bringing in multiple cameras, right? Now we're looking at OBS and, and vMix and the ATEM video switchers, PTZ cameras. If you're at that level, now we're starting to think, okay, like what am I doing? How do I put together a really good live stream? And I talk about this in the book. If you're at the level where you've got a couple cameras, you've got a press box or an area where you have some time, think about doing maybe a pre-show, right? So start your stream early. Test, 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 and start your stream early. When you start your stream early, that's your opportunity to start playing highlight reels, right? We talked about making highlight reels you can play them during the pre-show, right? Display the roster, show the players, show the schedule. And that could literally be as simple as sharing your screen and going through slides like I'm doing right now, right? You could have a slide for the roster. You could have a slide for the player profiles, a slide for the schedule. Keep people informed. People, when they're subscribing to your YouTube channel or your Facebook page, they get a notification when you go live. So they're going to get a notification. You don't want them to get a notification and then 20 minutes later jump on and the game's almost over. You want them to get that notification 20 minutes early. So start your live streams early. Send out an email. If you have an email list, I really think it's smart to develop an email list. And then when the game starts, that's when you want to start bringing in the live commentary, right? That's when you're using multiple cameras. That's when you're using instant replay and the, the real-time graphics, right? But when the game ends, you know, it's not necessarily over. I see so many high school football teams just game over, stop streaming, right? But give yourself a little time. Maybe interview the coach, right? Interview the fans. Let the, show people how much fun is happening, right? Announce future games. Cut to the commentary, right? Let them talk about the programs and the the things that they can buy to support the team, right? That You've got a captive audience. Use it. And then even think about a post show, right? In the post show, in all of these opportunities are times to show sponsorships, display QR codes, and really try to get emails into your email list so that people can sign up for your newsletters and get notifications for the live stream. So that's my soapbox on what you can do to really maximize all of that live streaming technology. Now we looked at OBS. And there's a video in the course specifically 
on how to use OBS to get that scoreboard in there, get a PTZ controller in there, really get the most of it. There's a feature in OBS called NDI, and I want to spend a second on it because it really opens up a lot of uh, tools here. So I have NDI installed on this computer, and what it allows me to do is output the NDI uh, video, right? so the video from this computer, to any other computer on the network. And it allows me to bring in NDI sources over the IP video network. Now, I have an entire book on NDI that I'm happy to link to and, and give you guys uh, the PDF for free. But essentially, it makes bringing video sources into your production so much easier. For example, uh, there's an NDI smartphone app. And you can literally have someone on a smartphone walk into the crowd and pump in a wireless camera into your production using NDI. Uh, another thing is, if you know, if we're using OBS as an example, you can bring in video sources like an instant replay system that captures cameras over HDMI and convert it to USB and bring that into OBS. So whether you're using NDI or you're using a capture card, you know, NDI is really like the way to go over IP where you don't need to pay for capture cards. But bringing things like instant replay into OBS, bringing video sources via NDI into OBS, I wanted to make sure I give you these examples, right? Connecting two computers together. So one computer is a kid doing graphics, the other computer is the person doing switching, right? And you can see in the middle here, we've just got a little network switch, right? So that network switch has a IP camera. You can see it's just network connected to this camera here. You've got a laptop connected and another laptop connected. And the ability to connect these together without using capture cards, this is a very affordable little like $50 network switch. It has power so we can power our cameras, right? Which makes it great because you can run a 300 foot cable to a camera that's way, way, way over here, for example. Um, this is the modern video production system. This is your level two reaching into level three here when you start to figure out how this stuff works. Um, the video quality of NDI, you can see this is an NDI video source here. Um, oop, that one there. Uh, you can see the video quality is great. I have some examples of this. I think this is a the actual, oh, that's just an image there. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is kind of the modern way to do things. You plug it into the network, you power all of your devices. This is a TP-Link, eight port, gigabit switch. Uh, only four of the ports on this specific one provide power, but gives you an example of how these things are connected in a modern world. And even when I'm out there doing, you know, like super high-end stuff with, this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cameras, they're all coming in over the network. Um, and it makes it super affordable. You just get a little network switch and you bring it all in. So Things are really getting interesting in this level two, level three world where you want to have multiple camera angles. Um, I also wanted to mention that you might need a USB audio mixer, right? And this audio mixer, you connect a couple microphones into it, a couple headsets. Maybe you've got a computer. Maybe you've got a video switcher, right? If your computer is chugging, right, and your computer can't handle all of these video sources coming into your computer, you can bring the cameras into a video switcher and just have one USB connection to the computer, and that makes it a lot less processing power. So that's another reason why people use video switchers. When we're looking at NDI, instead of having video switchers, now we've just got IP devices, right? We've got two PTZ cameras and a joystick connected to the PoE network, and the computer just needs an Ethernet connection, right? The HDMI is just to power a video screen. Um, and we could even have, this is something I wanted to mention, a video wall powered by just a single NDI decoder. So what that does is it takes the NDI output. Remember we were showing here that OBS can have an NDI output, right? So this is taking the video out of OBS or vMix or Wirecast and sending it over the network. And then we could take that to an NDI decoder box. I know this is a lot, but you know, rewatch it got a whole book on NDI, and power a video wall. So it's really cool stuff. In level two to three, another thing that is gets popular is cellular bonding, right? So getting those uh, that, that Wi-Fi connectivity, that cellular connectivity, and bonding it into a really powerful live stream connection. And then level three, 
is where we're really getting broadcast quality. And I think some of the things that we've done is borderline level two, level three, and some of the case studies here, but graphics, overlays, instant replay, video switching, all of that qualifies as level three. And then level three into level four, how do we get that information up to a video wall, right? And, and there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, I really like Scoreboard. Score Scorebird is a company that does some really good things with scores and displays it throughout uh, schools and different monitors and things like that. But when we're in this level two to level three scenario, you know, we're looking at, do we need a camcorder? Do we have a kid with a camcorder? And how do we get that into, uh, camcorders often have like an HDMI output, right? So we got to capture that HDMI, convert it to USB, plug it into a computer, or connect that HDMI into a video switcher. Action cameras, right? I, I love smartphones. Smartphones are great for this kind of thing. Um, you can bring a smartphone in. And then PTZ cameras, which also offer audit, uh, tracking, right? You can track players with PTZ cameras now using auto tracking. So uh, really good in sports like tennis that we've tested. But um, auto tracking, you can track like any any person really or any player on the field with PTZ cameras. So that's cool stuff. Um, and then camera layouts, which we're going to look at in our next video, but how to lay out these cameras so that the coaches are happy with the video they're getting. The productions can do an engaging production for the fans and the, and the parents. And then capturing good audio, right? Sometimes just commentary is honestly enough. But if you want to hear the crowd, if you want to hear the, um, you know, the helmets hitting each other and things like that, uh, we talk about that in the book. Uh, we looked at capturing commentators, bringing in additional audio sources, and microphones is the same process. We're going to bring that into an audio mixer and use the X keys buttons. And then we bring it all together with either streaming software or streaming hardware. Now, we mentioned when we're streaming here, we have to choose a bit rate, right? And I highly recommend streaming at 60 frames per second, okay? that What that does is it makes it easier to see fast-moving objects like a ball. When you're streaming in 60 frames a second, you do need to have a pretty high bit rate. So 5 megabits for 720p at 60 frames a second, 8 megabits for 1080p at 60 mega, at 8 megabits per second, and then 4K60, we're looking at double that, 16 megabits per second. So make sure you have enough upload quality to handle that, uh, those recommendations. And then just a little idea on budget here. So like the if you're on a budget, you get a camcorder, you get OBS, right? You use a smartphone. A smartphone can be used as an NDI video source. Bring that into OBS. Um, you can, in a mid-tier, you know, you're looking at PTZ cameras, VMAX, the Pro, you're looking at 4K cameras, encoders, and audio. Now, when we're talking about camera placement, I'm going to do more of this in the next uh, chapter. But main shot, your close-up cameras, your action cameras, your fan cams, your hero cameras. I work with a, a football team that literally puts a hero camera at the corner of the football field and the players can kind of dance in front of it and show some really cool stuff that they do. And when you got all these cameras, now we're talking about live action, right? We're talking about switching in fast-paced moments. We're talking about doing replay and analysis and you probably want to have clear communication with your team when you're doing that. Um, the coolest thing about all of this is all the things we've talked about and I've mentioned this throughout is that these cameras can be used for multiple things. So one of them is for coaching, the end zone instant replay, and, and then that same camera can be tied into the OBS or the VMix or the video production. So, you know, the more cameras you add, think about, you know, the dual use opportunities. So let's transform your sports video, jumping into the next video, really looking at the different layouts for different sports. I'll see you in the next video.